Yeah. That's important. Yeah. Yeah, because really... you can you, you can see like the pro product know how is excellent in a way. Like yeah, exactly. All these like core gameplay progressions are connected. Let's say we have the hobby model here. Then there's like uh, different ones in the Martian game and. Uh, yes, the, but you uh, don't have the say games fucking amazing UA team. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's the thing. thing. And that's, that's the, the question. That's the million dollar question. Will these studios be able to actually do it themselves and leave publishers Ooh. forever? Yeah, was it because of their UA teams or This is no bullshit gaming podcast, two and a half gamers. Sharing actionable insights, dropping knowledge from our day-to-day -day user acquisition, game design, and ad monetization jobs. We are definitely not discussing the latest industry news, but having so much fun. Let's not forget this is a 4 a.m. conference discussion vibe, so let's not take it too seriously. Yeah, it's a regular one. Okay, okay. In that case, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, this is session number 86. Uh, my name is Batya Lancharic. I'm Felix Broberg. And I'm Jakub Remiar. And we are your hosts. And we are, we are also your consultants. Uh, we are also working uh, with multiple companies on their games from UA, ad monetization, and game design perspective. So today uh, we're going to talk about another interesting story uh, hyper casual, from hyper casual to hybrid casual is slightly different than what we've done before because now we're focusing on estoti studio uh, which was uh, part of say games or well they publish say their games, games published, are published by yeah, say, games. say yeah. games published their games and they were pretty big hits uh, but now they're kind of going on their own adventure into the hybrid casual uh, space. Uh, yeah. But before so to, we do that. Before before yeah. starting, how was Korea? Yes, exactly. That's what <laughs> I wanted to say before we start. We just came back from South Korea. Uh, uh, yeah, that was amazing. Ago. Yeah, the load complete party, really thanks for them making it happen, was literally amazing. Uh, you heard was... it from the speech. It was their idea, and I pushed them to actually do it. Because yeah. when, last time when we were here with Mr. Felix over there, over here, he was like, oh, well, we need to go to the G-Star. I was like, oh, well, you know, uh, it's in Busan. You can rent a yacht party. He's like, what? Wait, wait, wait a second. <laughs> you can rent a yacht for like a few hours. Like, okay, yeah, let's do that. Let's definitely do that. Let's invite an interesting interesting studios, and then let's have a, let's have a chat. And it was amazing. Really, yeah, it, it really cold, great. really bumpy, <laughs> but great. Yeah, it, it was literally freezing our ass off on the second deck uh, level. Yes. Uh, but yeah, it was definitely worth it. The view was amazing. There was even fireworks uh, around with like other boats kind of swarming and just started throwing fireworks out of nowhere. It was all under the giant uh, bridge in Busan, which is like completely... Um, you know, RGB lighted uh, in the evening, so like a lot of lot of uh, nice colors, and there's a beautiful sunset. So yeah, yeah. It was was very nice. It was and full that, of that, that, local of course, companies. Yeah, for local companies, even like out, outside companies, it's kind of a close and party. In, yeah, and then uh, our new friends from Century Games. So we met with uh, with the CMO, and uh, I was. That would have been a really interesting conversation. I mean, that was was <laughs> I'm coming. I'm coming next time. I'll come next time. Honestly, yeah. it was the best conversation because you could immediately see it heaven knows he knows his shit and like yeah. the whole company knows yeah. how to do stuff so it was really good one uh so yeah definitely coming next year and maybe even uh even sooner you you never know yeah, huh? yeah. Never know. like the expo area yeah, was kind of smaller compared to gamescon like i wasn't expecting to be that small uh like just the size difference but like for me the biggest downside was of course there was no merchandising area with like lots of animal oh, stuff you could oh, so <laughs> benefits then he, man, he was he was <laughs> bitching about no merch like almost half a day it was just it was terrible it was, that was like really bad i mean honestly if you compare gamescon to to g star it's like eight times bigger than what you see in G-Star. Yeah, in size. Of the but uh, obviously different audience. So yeah. it kind of uh, kind of makes sense to go there anyway. Yeah. So to the topic yeah. of today. Yeah. So today, like Mathieu said, we're talking about the hidden gem or like you have to be in the know to know who Estoti is until now, pretty much, because in terms of hybrid, hybrid, hybrid casual, they're a studio that has always worked kind of one step behind them and has, their, has had their games published. 
they started off getting published by Ketchup, which then, of course, turned into Ubisoft. And then they went over to publishing games strictly for Say Games. But it's probably the only gaming company... Uh, well, some of the metrics, let me just read them off here. So over 1 billion downloads uh, to the company, oh, yeah. 200 million active players, and over 10 top 10 hits. So this probably makes them one of the biggest gaming companies in terms of the user base, like ever, and probably the biggest gaming company in the entire world that I had to tell Remo about that he didn't know about <laughs> until three weeks ago. I'm pretty sure I posted he... about Estelle and then he's Man, I... like, who dare? Come on. I'm pretty sure he, he knew about it. Oh, 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 wait a second. He didn't know about Kayak from Japan. So I guess like... He, no, it's hi hyper casual. When it's on the hyper casual scale, yeah, yeah, he, like, knows, oh, he yeah. knows titties and hardcore games. <laughs> waifu. Sorry, waifu. Sorry, waifus. Sorry. Waifus he knows and them. horse, horse girls. Horse girls, like really well. And then like hybrid casual because he doesn't have, you know, any core loops past, you know. <laughs> no no system. No system <laughs> vectors. No vectors. But anyway, uh, he's rectified that now. And now he knows his study both in and out because kind of what they're doing now is I think they're trying to go direct to consumer. They've been working with Say Games for so long and we've been doing a lot of digging on this. But their growth, like we're looking at some of their older games uh, in their portfolio and they have had so many hits that you know about. So just to name a few before I'll turn it over to Re like Remo, they made Squad Alpha, Johnny Trigger, Match Hit, My Little Universe, Knife Hit, uh, flippy race house paint that's just to name a couple of how them many, how many of these you actually played mister who kn who knows this I've played, I've played squad alpha johnny trigger and i've played uh flappy uh, flippy race that's the only okay. ones i've played yeah. okay by the way they have the snow drift game that i told you about the one that's like referring to that anime i was watching on the plane yeah. Yeah. The there anime. you go there you go well of course he was watching anime the whole plane i was watching star wars <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway. anyway, yeah. <laughs> anyway, like I had a quick look on Sensor Tower just now before, and right now, like mo their biggest titles in terms of revenue on IAP is making anywhere between just on IAP alone is making anywhere between two to three million a month uh, in total. Which but is only on IAP, which is right? Squad Alpha, right? Yeah, Squad Alpha is the biggest one. Then it's my little universe, and then. Can you uh, share the screen? What you're looking course. at, actually? Of so, course. Uh, so uh, you know our YouTube, uh, our YouTube uh, subscribers yeah. can actually see it. So this is uh, going back all in time uh, since they started launching games in January. This is under Ketchup, which is now Ubisoft, mm. and you can just go around seeing here the downloads. So here you can see. The crazy yeah, the amount of downloads man, that that's, Johnny Trigger that's had. Amazing. That's in one month, 42 yeah. million downloads. It's insane. Good old days. Yeah, good old days. Good, of old, Africa, Africa, Africa. good old Corona days. Yeah. But then if you flip <laughs> yeah. the switch, but then if you flip the switch eye and look at revenue, right? Then you really see what's been going on. You see yeah, what the yeah, trend yeah. is happening, right? Because yeah, this is the hybrid hyper casual area. And now we're moving to the hybrid casual. And Estotti are just rolling with the punches and you just know, knocking out hits no matter what. So I'm assuming that's what you're going to be talking about now, right? Yeah. So this will be a more of a like detective episode because yes. I wanted to kind of like figure out what's happening here. It's like, yeah, I, you don't really know these companies behind the big publishers in hybrid casual uh, these days. So I want to look through like the, you know, the usual thing that I talk about here, which is like, which is the parent, which game is coming from which other game and which took like... Uh, someone else's kind of hmm. progression or core gameplay and then move it themselves because we found out like some really surprising results as i will be going forward with this and i guess it's kind of worth uh mentioning this was also of course mentioned to us by our very good friends from the slack channel of two and a half gamers so for everyone who wants to join the discussion and find these hidden gems that are being thrown at us which i'm really thankful for feel free to join yeah, uh, one of our uh, friends there, Sammy from Ketchup, uh, got a, a nice nickname from Jakub. It's Golden Sammy now. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for bringing this up because uh, this is exactly why we have the, the Slack channel. And so we can at the end of the year, when Jakub, when Manche gives out his Hook of the Year award, uh, you know, Rima will also give out a reward for the most helpful person in our Slack group in terms of game design. Mm -hmm. So, of course. Interesting. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> So let's start with uh, My Little Universe. Call it the Golden Goose. Golden <laughs> <laughs> Goose. 
But then we need to we need to think about uh, what kind of award you're gonna uh, you're gonna have. It's gonna be well, well, Captain I've made Hook, up your award, so you guys make it up for me. How about that? Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I'm sure we'll okay. Think about so anything familiar with that game as you see it for the first time? I don't see this the first time I played it before. Yeah. Okay. Felix, anything familiar? Yeah, it's the same mechanics as you see on a lot of say games, hit games. One moving character that you just move it and it does actions when you come close to it. Yeah. And but it's, it's pretty was... much you can see it's this, the same template that you've been talking so much about in all the conferences. Yeah, but this but this was the first game from their portfolio, so this is from Good Golden Goblins and all of these uh, other other games. What Golden Goblins? You mean? Well, this. Uh, I mean, this is the first this... kind of a arcade. What's a core gameplay that I've seen there? Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. That was done by Estoti in Soft Launch in August 5th, 2021. Ooh. And all the other games kind of follow in their, their tracks. But the interesting part is that all of the like big hits on Sagan's portfolio using this core gameplay and then merging it with other elements aren't from Estoti. Yeah, uh, it's from different, different yeah, it's studios. Different. So it seems to me like this is also the one thing that that's happening there that uh, the you know publishers see into all of these other things and they can pull the strings between their studios. But this this exactly what Happy does. Oh, you know, like they have well, look like yeah, they have the template kind of, and they the this is the, this is the different was... man. This is the different thing here. This is the core gameplay. Happy has the progression. Okay. These guys are using the same core gameplay with different progressions. Hubby is using different core gameplays from different studios mm. with the same progression they have. Okay. So it's the other F way around. Fair enough, fair enough. But <laughs> almost the same. Other way around, but almost the same. But this is more of an idea. It isn't like yeah. the template that like Hubby yeah, okay. uses. So yeah, um, My Little Universe, this is the game that like uses this kind of arcade core loop, but you just kind of walk to something, you chop it down, you move resources from left to right. I don't see that much kind of idle part with it. Idle mm. meaning that there's some resources being generated offline or in the meantime, and you collect them later or whatever, like they're pretty much being automated. Uh, this is like pure arcade. And like you go from here and there, you have these kind of currency conversions of like, let's say, here, for instance, I'm melting these rocks to steel or whatever, like the usual kind of simulation loop. But it, it, it isn't done kind of automated as a normal simulation game. So this kind of brings us to this very, very easy, nice, let's say, arcadey feel where you're just chopping down trees and stuff like that. And then you're immediately buying, let's say, new resources or new land with it, like here. Again, same same thing as Dreamdell uses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's an ad. Um, Heroes. You walk on to the cost that's on your ground and you pay for something and the progression kind of unfolds. This is exactly the same system that Dreamdale uses, but Dreamdale also on top of it has some of the other elements that are done with the idle progression because you can hire the workers, you can automate the things and suddenly it's an idle. It's not just arcade. This is kind of a more of a pure arcade. So, yeah, let's see. Um... This was, as I said, like August 5th, 2021, <laughs> the first of the, yeah, yeah. this would be a fun episode. I can't this first of, this first of the, the ad simulator. <laughs> yeah. The, like, like today I, I watched something like 300 ads plus, like, uh, yeah, I had a lot of this uh, today. Thank you, you for know, supporting you, my uh, end of the business. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much like playing one game and then like having an ad. So I switch to the other game and then like maybe. after someone has never ad. made an IAP, it's nice that you're finally contributing to the mobile gaming ecosystem. Maybe I could be, if you don't <laughs> cheat finally and you don't play it on this fucking emulator, then you would be able to turn off the internet and play it without ads. That's Ooh. how it's done. That's how it's done. Uh, well, well, I, I think no, I'll, no, I'll no, just no, like no. add the router hack there that like or add the hook, blocks yeah. ads outright. Yeah. So or, right. or you can anyway. You, can you guys are jerks. <laughs> <laughs> Just watch the ads. <laughs> For sure. No, so this no. is this is pretty much my little universe. Uh, continue. Oh, well, that's nice. It's your little universe. Oh, uh, <laughs> my God, this will be a fun one. <laughs> Yeah, well, and and see, can you imagine this is like for three days in like in South Korea on the way there, it's just like fucking never ending, seventeen yeah. hours journey, and then yeah. again the same thing, seventeen hours journey back. Yeah, so <laughs> nah. a lot of fun. This is uh, Squad Alpha, their other game. 
Uh, this screams to me that they were using some things from Johnny Trigger. There are the hundred percent, hundred percent, yeah, yeah, and then taking on some stuff from Archero, and it was a nice merge in a way, like an iteration, not just a direct copy or like one to one. Like we take. Would some you call this a hybrid casual game or a hyper or a casual game? Squad Alpha, uh, or, or yeah, Squad Alpha. Opinion. Squad Alpha is definitely a hybrid one. But do you remember we wanted to like bring up Squad Alpha, but we kind of we didn't them. because we didn't think it was a hybrid casual. No, 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 no. We, we, went we with just the... thought that we got like too many games that look like Archero or Survivor. Yeah, and also uh, we yeah. went with we went with the failure uh, pirate bullshit. Because this is we, a fun you game, like pirates. Anyway. You like the thing is that it's a little bit more kind of strategic than than your usual Archer because, for instance, here I can switch weapons. You know, these guys. This yeah, I wouldn't like... say it's actually like casual. It's a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, and more core like. <laughs> like it seems to me like a little bit like Hitman streamlined, uh, to be honest. Because for instance, you can do these strikes or whatever. Just just wait for some people mm. like select the like specific weapon to counter the weapon of your opponent and stuff like that. So mm. there's a little bit more strategy definitely than Archer, which is or Survivor, which is just like melt the enemies with your <laughs> whatever build that you're using. But you can also go like full Hitman and just like roll over everyone. It's still possible if the like weapon. You know, full uses... hitman is just you know going in the shadows and then like keep no, no, everybody. No, full hitman is using the double barrettas and like killing everyone and have like the mass murder score there. That's full hitman man. Oh, because that, that was usually me. I I just, just <laughs> yeah. tried to sneak you know, because I also try to sneak and then like some random guy screams at me and triggers alarm and I lose my shit and like exactly just, you know, yeah exactly and then the just go go bananas <laughs> always. Yeah. That's the best hitman. Bananas. <laughs> Yeah, so this is called Alpha again, very successful game. And the good thing is that again, you could see that the the like the product know how the studio how they iterated and not just copied stuff. So this is like a very important milestone. This was soft on July first, twenty twenty one. After all of these things, um there were other games done in the meantime. They were also like publishing like different games. Uh, they I, meaning say games Estoti. or Estoti. Estoti. Okay. Uh, but th if I understood correctly, there wasn't a game that was using the arcade um, core gameplay from mm -hmm. them, but from different companies, because there were games such as Dreamdale, uh, which was soft launch December 30, 2021. So that's the same year as the My Little Universe was soft launched by Hypernova Games. My Perfect Hotel comes July 29, 2022 by Redux Games. The soft mm -hmm. launch. I'm leading the soft, soft launches. Soft launch, yeah, launches. Yeah, yeah, soft launch. so and now we have after. Uh, King or Fail Castle Takeover. That is soft launch June 28, 2022 by Play Focus. Do you have the all... graphs in front of you? Can you share the graphs or no? Those are no graphs behind those. Oh, those okay. are just notes. Those okay. are notes in a way like how, how, how. But here you can see that pretty much three different studios from Say Games portfolio reuse this kind of arcade core gameplay and like the, the you know pretty much the systems of core gameplay like paying with resources here the conversion mm -hmm. the backpacks like the ui is pretty much the same like the, all of ui progressions were shifted a little bit because for instance king of fail already has a combat loop in it my perfect hotel has the idle reset loop in it dreamdale has both dungeons edit and both uh idle progression added into mm -hmm. it so they're reusing the core gameplay not the progression as i said which is kind of interesting. Yeah, but uh, like, why? Why? Because they know it works and has excellent KPIs. That's, day one retention, because yes. core gameplay is the reflection of your yes. day one retention. Okay. And then CPI. And that, whoa, I think wait, 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 we're wait, getting wait. to, yeah, we're getting to CPI discussion right now. Yeah, I want to talk now, about that as well. Now we can see, and which is the, like, the, the real thing we'll be talking about today, there are three games on Estoti portfolio currently, which are all pretty much 90% the same using yeah. the arcade survivor kind of a let's the, say genre. Yeah, but then different kind of... Uh, different visuals. Different so, visual themes, yes. But if, if you kind of think about like the, it's still within almost the same kind of visual style. It's just, well, low poly depends a little bit. Well, I mean, the Western... The graphic style is visual, but the theme is different. Yes, the theme is different. Graphic style is visual. Uh, this is not, not different, but the theme is different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyone wants to ask something until I do a drill down on all three? <laughs> no, I just wanted to point Yeah, out. I want to... Can I just show the okay, audience, okay. right? 
sure, sure. So can I show the audience one thing here that I just pulled up uh, on Sensor Tower? That basically, it's quite recent that they started doing this because here are the two that mouth they found like a yeah. genius. <laughs> they still actually has two publisher accounts. Yes. Uh, one under Estotti and one Estotti Vilnius yeah. UAB. And you can see it's pretty much in the last like 100 days that things have started happening on these accounts. Because if we go back like oh, yeah, second. this whole year, then you can see that nothing really started happening on any games. Like yes. until and you know, yeah, April. You know what you should add? Uh, what? Add uh, Dreamdale and My Perfect Hotel into those graphs, and then I oh, bet they are in the publisher regular. Uh, so the publisher that won't work. Or anywhere, yeah. Okay, because no. it's you know they started like July. So if I look into like when My Perfect Hotel started scaling, then we might see like why is this actually working quite well for them, and why they started using this kind of strategy, I guess. Where is this? But you can continue. Me, I can check it yeah. in the meantime. Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Remo, take it away. Yeah. So, um, can I share? Yeah. Yeah. So, starting with Idol Breaker, which was soft launch April twenty fifth this year, then Mars Survivor, which was soft launch June thirtieth this year, and then West Escape, which was soft launch October twelfth, twenty twenty three. So, um. Remember the story of alien invasion. For those who don't remember, there was a similar thing happening where guys from Multicast Gaming had their game called Fishing Something that I forgot. Uh, if somebody can Google that for me, thank you guys. Uh, and that uses the exact same core gameplay and Fish Idol Fishing Tycoon. I was I had just discussion yeah. about this game today. Exactly. So they had the game. And then they a little bit iterated, but switched the team dramatically into aliens versus scientists versus this kind of, you know, alien invasion. Uh, and suddenly it's a giant hit, even though the games are pretty much the same. Hmm. So what's happening here? Any UA managers want to pitch in? Cheaper CBIs. Well, fish versus uh, aliens, aliens team. Most probably happening in here. Because if if this is the yeah this is the only well they had a little bit of a little bit of success in May 2021 but then the game kind of died and then they started with Alien Invasion in October 2022 and then suddenly started scaling so I would say there was also like something different but main reason the different theme which is way more interesting than like fishing. And if you think about it, there's no other game. More like interesting or has bigger targetable audience? That's, this yeah. is the question. Yes. Yeah, like the fishing is like niche as fuck. And, but uh, aliens in space could have like a kind of like... Everyone's in Star Wars. Higher right? potential reach. But star, yeah, but that's, that's quite different. This is not Star Wars. It's more like Alien versus Predator and yeah. Yeah. Alien yeah, yeah, horror yeah, yeah, movies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I would say yeah, it's could be just like the the bigger potential reach uh, and wide, wide appeal yeah. rather than just fishing. Okay. So remembering that we are pretty much right here where we're not covering a successful hybrid. We're uh, covering a studio that's trying to create their own successful hybrid without the publisher now, if we understood correctly. Mm -hmm. And they already are trying three new teams with the same core. And I guess a little bit shifted progressions. Uh, I think they are kind of the same. Maybe I just they just don't kind of add them into the new ones because Idol Breaker was the first one, soft launch in April, is the most robust one. Because yeah. if I go, it, into it the, makes like one hundred sixty thousand. Yeah, per it's month. already already <clears throat> doing only IPs from September. Yeah. Yes, all the yeah. IPs. So I have a feeling it's... probably this is at least sixty or fifty percent ads. Yeah, at least. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so if I look here, you could see already that they have the usual kind of a hobby uh, yeah. merging <laughs> progression there. I think the shop is also kind of very, very reminiscent of the hobby thing. So you have the normal mm. place, even the, like, the, the prices here of gems, like they're literally the same. So you have, let's say here in this heavy duty crate, you have gear that you can get only from there. The mm, Air yeah, One, the Hubby has the yeah. S1. S1. Mm. Then you have the normal gear and like uh, 
so let me just click and the all of all course you don't you, you don't buy anything, <laughs> yeah, of course i don't buy nothing skipping the ads yeah, yeah. so the, the shop's literally the same the progression here on the combat side is the same but the core gameplay of course is completely different uh they have this very nice loop where you can increase the damage of your farming speed by three times for an ad that's that's kind of really good by the way felix have you noticed something about the forced ads here i did notice something about the force i was a very very big difference there's a very big difference because they do four different types of ad units which is quite rare because usually it's rewarded interstitial and banners but this is one of the only hybrid casual games that actually does rewarded interstitial and rewards gold and gives a countdown timer when you're playing it and basically saying you're about to see an ad in five four three two one and it says you're going to get x amount of gold from watching it and that's Mm. the first time i see that on hybrid casual and dare I say that it's the first on Estotti because mm, it's I see, a nice. pile of poo. <laughs> <laughs> Reward interstitials are really not that good. And it's you know what I do, by the way, when I see this? What? I always watch the other ad to skip it. So if I'm watching an ad, I can get more out of it. Mm. Like Ooh. the one that increases your uh, farming speed. I pretty much counter the ad with an ad. Oh, so you click on that so okay interesting during okay. the thing so i kind of at least i'm getting a little bit more kind of a bank but so i think what they're going to find out that the reward interstitial is just like not a widely adopted ad unit so you don't get that much fill or competition for it and also mm. it's like why just not make people watch rewarded instead like yeah mm. yeah but do you see like the the western game it doesn't have the banner yeah, western game. but i think western game because it's the newest one they're just yeah there's like zero yeah, yeah, yeah they even check. don't have in the western game the increase the farming speed three times uh, yeah at placement. looks like there's but, zero revenues on, on that the western but even seeing these launch. games next to each other you can clearly see that they're building a template yeah, yeah, yeah. like if, if if we go here and i, I put up the, the mars game yeah hmm. mars survivor like the, yeah yeah that is close me to by the way this is this is the one close that I to like alien the invasion yeah yeah that's the theme okay oh jesus christ oh wow what the fuck that looks yeah. amazing but this one but this is literally following the 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 plot of the martian movie yeah uh, oh, yeah, where you true. like crash land on mars and then mm. you need to like scavenge stuff and then like this whole thing that you see here was like completely broken i completely renovated it Ooh. i whatever you have these conversion stations like same as like my little universe mm. Then you have the main kind of upgrade your tool, which is your level basically thing, which like drives all of these three games. Then for instance, here I have like, finally I have oxygen inside. So I, because th- they have this nice mechanic of you running out of oxygen and you need to always kind of get it. If you die, it doesn't matter. You just respawn near it. But it's a nice thing to kind of have there as some kind of a other thing. I was expecting, I would see increased movement speed at that usual my perfect hotel and dream Dell has, but mm. these, these guys don't have it. So you can still push for more. So would you say that these guys, so now it's the ones with the templates is Say Games, Habby, and Estotti? The, the thing in the hyper casual like genre? Yeah, yeah. The thing yeah, is but that it's quite early to say anything about Estotti. I, I don't think so. It's a template because yeah, let me exactly. give you the, the like the, the difference here. Why it's not a template. Habby, they have a template because they can test different games with the same progression. These games are pretty much all the same, just different teams. So it's yeah. not really a template. It's more an A-B test. Mm. Like this whole, pretty, all pretty those much. three games. Yeah, yeah it's okay. not a template. It's just a reskin, basically. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty much a reskin. Uh, so the template that, that you see regarding the Dream Dale, My Perfect Hotel, and King or Fail, that's concerning the progression a little bit because there's idle progression. There's the like this kind of a core gameplay UI. Everything is kind of same, and they're changing it with the like combat edition to King or Fail, the idle hotel reset edition to My Perfect Hotel, and dungeons and like whatever kind of to drink there. So dungeons and that, that's much closer to to like a template. This is more of a, I guess these guys trying to refine their expertise with this kind of arcade core gameplay, and adding it the survivor meta or whatever you call it here because all all the games are like exactly the same regarding like you go you dig out these resources by the way i think 
one of the biggest issues that I have with all of these games compared to Dream Dell is that and in it's, three, two, one, here it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah so Boom. It's, it's it's not intuitive because, for instance, I need to get some whatever like broken cans or whatever. Like, how do you get those? Like, from from what? It's not that intuitive. Like, which resource to break that gives you like broken cans or like yeah, even here like a bush gives you wood or whatever. So it's struggling a little bit because in Dreamdale it's very easy. Like chopping wood, you get wood. You're fishing. But that's you... an easy fix, right? They can just put that up there next to no, fix the not, railway switch. It's not an e easy fix, man. It's the problem is the team. The, the team uh, pretty much constricts you on like what you can put in it. And therefore the team kind of makes it a little bit more confusing. Because Dreamdale, they have this kind of fairy team, so it's very easy. But in space, for instance, like this whole space junk that you have there, like yeah. I don't even know what these are, like like batteries like coming out of solar panels or what. So, so why is it important? Why is it important? Because yes. it needs to be intuitive for the player to understand immediately what he needs to do. If he okay. if he don't, he you know gets confused and turns out. That's that's like easy easy fix there. See, like Ooh. what are the even give you? Yeah. The... <laughs> I don't know. And I do. Maybe they Why can make a subreddit with... with all the with all the <laughs> with all yeah, the people it's... from all the like, from care. all the it's Blizzard like games. <laughs> four different four different uh, soft currencies or what? Like uh, not soft currencies. Uh, Warcraft Rumble guys can team up with these materials. guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, four different materials. Like no, I don't care. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, this is like I think the, the the worst part of it. As I said, the Martian game seems the most intuitive because. For instance, if I don't know something, I click on it and it tells me like you need to go here. Yeah. This game, the the cowboy game, it's just like I need <laughs> what, the, what's it called? You can't call best, it a cowboy game. Where's the escape? Where's the Idle break you can click on it as Idle break you can click on it as well and tells you where to go. Yeah, yeah. Like in, in the West game, like if I want to have <laughs> What's nails, it called? West Escape. West Escape. Come on, like the West three games, like the West Show Escape and Mars Mar Survivor. Yeah, exactly. What the fuck? Yeah. Come on. The, like. the the thing is that if I click here, it doesn't tell me I need nails or like. Yeah, it's just like. Boohoo! Of... It's like it's in the soft line for a month. I know, I know, I know. But like, I would expect like if you like, you know. Uh, topping well, of the learnings of the previous game, you would have the base features of those. Yeah, already. I would expect soft launched games have UA. These don't. Yeah. That's, so that's, <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, it makes sense because if you are a, a game studio that kind of like work, like develop games and then the publisher takes over and then they do their UA, then you don't know how to do UA. You don't have a plan to like soft launch a game. You don't know yeah. how to do it basically. So you do whatever you kind of like got from the conversations with the, <laughs> with the publisher. So There's different kind of, hearing and doing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, How? it looks like that. Like, they just have like thousand instas from US, no UA, on both games. There's like some revenue coming from um, the Mars Survivor, but from West Escape, no, nothing. But it's just yeah, it's, that is a soft launch. It's why it's quite early, early. Yeah. Two questions for you, Matia. So, like, what are the biggest challenges probably facing Estotino from a UA perspective since they're doing this and setting up their own UA? And how would you do these soft launches differently? So it's not like differently, it's just you need to have a plan because they can do, I mean, they can make mistakes that, uh, and they will make decisions based on these mistakes. So I think like for the Idol Breaker, I think they run Unity and Aplavin and they're now kind of like, I guess, getting to scale something. But again, whereas Facebook, Google, other channels, uh, and then they have viewers only for now, which is, I guess, the the old hyper, hyper casual kind of soft launch plan to get some some data in so i mean like if you if you think about this fine but then you need to have different types of campaigns as well and enough enough data to be able to see like how the ltv grows and like what kind of retention different channels also different retention curves and different the ltv curves as well so like that's important, and like I, I'm not sure if these are, these guys are getting these, and like what is the, the actual plan? Like where they, how they want to acquire users? Where isn't when, the plan just like money? have US CPI kind of relevant metric as soon as possible, and then figure out based on that? Yeah, that was like hyper, hyper casual kind of style, right? Yeah, yeah right yeah. now, 
you don't. There will there were hyper casuals to build. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. I know. I know. It's like kind of like nobody knows how to do it with hybrids efficiently. I mean, like, yeah, do you just reskin the game or like reskin the early part of it and then like throw it in team and see or like how would you do it then? I mean, in terms of what? In terms of UA? No, to keep the velocity of like we want to test as much games as possible still, oh, but yeah, we want to get like immediate results and stuff like that. Because with hyper casuals it's easy, but like with these games, actually, you need to build those. You know, I know you need to build those, but I guess you know you have the. For, for let's say like... the the West Escape game is the like the bare bones that you can. Yeah, test, that's why it's like... still kind of massive compared to any hyper casual. Yeah, yeah, because like it's, it still looks like MVP. So now they have it in the US and getting data, but I don't see like any UA. So I guess they're just getting organics, which is also not very relevant to be honest. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they're just kind of cross promoting the games from one to another which i also don't think it's happening <laughs> so mm. anyway uh yeah you could do us only for a certain period of time or just open beta and then just get kind of like open the, the game to the whole world and get some kind of not featuring but free organics which is from the whole world and kind of measure the retention on that but uh you need to get to up even optimize campaigns as soon as possible and uh, mm-hmm. you, as, since you have like both IIPs and uh, and ads, I would even say you need to go to purchase campaigns quite early mm-hmm. to figure out like how it works. If, if See, this, this is, is going to be fifty fifty, this is the difference with Hobby because Hobby can test their whole monetization progression, whatever, what not, because they just switch in. Yeah, you know, they the already module. have. Yeah, they already have that. Like the packs, the the currencies, the economy is all the same. Yeah. Here is and, different core gameplay. Yeah, and I think. <clears throat> why they don't run UA yet because now I think the idol breaker is kind of like only, only now it's picking up it still like grows month over month so I guess like they're kind of figuring out uh, what should they do on the UA side and until they figure that out uh, on idol breaker then they kind of uh, use that on, on West I, mean, I, I looked on, on LinkedIn and they have they have one UA manager who's been there three years but there's two companies right so yeah Let's Wait, two compa- no, no, just two, two accounts. No, just so, two accounts. It's one company. Just two accounts, one company. They used to have two LinkedIn pages as well. One Estoti and one Estoti Villainius. Okay, Ooh. maybe we don't know something here. Well, yeah, yeah, maybe we don't know something. Anyway, that's... So I think uh, it could be just uh, two different uh, offices, but that's yeah. like maybe too complicated. Mm. Yeah, but anyway. the, the thing that I'm pointing here, and like this is really interesting, is that this pretty much confirms the trend that I've been talking about my latest kind of conference track talks uh, lately, that it was just a matter of time when all of these hyper casual studios that are now pretty much kind of forced to do hybrids anyway, are mm-hmm. trying their own luck to do the thing without the publishers because they had the product know-how before, but they, you know, they can build as many of these games as, as they can. Like like we see here, like why not build three of the same game and change yes, the, the but, theme? Yes, but now you need UA, creatives, ad monetization, analytics. Da- analytics. So it's like, I mean, honestly, I, I always kind of say like, look. The publisher's you, expertise pretty much because pretty now much, you're yeah. on your own. Yeah. yeah, now you're on your own because, I mean, they are, like, it's, it's quite hard. Uh, obviously, you don't need to hire like f- team all the time. You can just hire us as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's, <laughs> that's easy. also possible. That's also possible. But that's like, honestly, with these, like, if you have already free games uh, in the pipeline, you definitely need the data, data analytics, and uh, and also like at least like you said, one UA. I mean, you don't even need UA person for full time, but you need creatives for sure. So at least like a partner. It doesn't need to be publisher, but someone who who actually knows what he or she is doing, yeah. and that's important. Yeah. Yeah, because Absolutely. you can you, you can see like the pro- product know how is excellent in a way. Like yeah, exactly. These, like core gameplay progressions are connected. Let's say we have the hobby model here. Then there's like uh, different ones in the Martian game and. Uh, yes, but you uh, don't have the say games. Fucking amazing UA team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's the, the thing. thing. And that's, that's the, the question. That's the million dollar question. Will these studios be able to actually do it themselves and leave publishers Ooh. forever? Yeah, was it because of their UA teams or because the product was so good? Yeah. That's a million. That's that's a very yeah. good question, actually. Because, we're about to see, right? Yeah, we're definitely about to see. And I, can we <laughs> keep following this? Because it's like, I'm I'm starting to think that lately, uh, like, is this like 
let's say you have a failed game. No, I don't want to say failed game. You have a game with unscalable CPI. Yeah. So the answer is what? Risking it? Like, is, is this whole strategy that we're seeing here, like, implying yeah. it? Yeah, definitely. Yes. I mean, if, if you know. Like if you don't have, if you have a hybrid with unscalable CPI, risking it. Yeah. But like, why not? I mean, like, unscalable CPI, like, well, unscalable because you know, CPI. nobody was, I, I don't think so, anybody was doing it with, like, you know, all the helix jumps and the whole no, 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 of course, no, I'm, uh, maybe a little bit. Uh, you had these, like, games that were copying each other. Uh, and, but not games copying each other. True. I'm not talking risking. about same studio really releasing the game on their own account with a different team. That that wasn't mm. happening. No, no, that wasn't happening. Because if, if if a hyper casual game failed, so so what? Yeah, bye. Goodbye and Good yeah. next one. Nobody yeah. was like you know spending this amount of resources in order to like put no, three because... of the same game. No, no, no. Because it was like, oh well, we have only one game to make another prototype. So fuck it. <laughs> why? Yeah, why? Yeah. Why should we reskin? If I see another medieval merge g- ad, I'm gonna <laughs> fucking kill myself. Seriously, <laughs> just stop playing that game. Just, just still stand, stand still. <laughs> It's terrible. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. But anyway, now, now if kind if of you do sense. work at Estoti, like, please feel free to answer my email that I sent you guys a couple of weeks ago <laughs> inviting you to come on the pod. We'd love to have yeah, you on and talk to. about these games. Or, or if you think we're talking complete bullshit and like our assumptions are completely out of the blue, again, feel free to correct us. We will be very Yeah, happy. because that could, that could definitely, that could definitely happen. happen. And probably <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but honestly, Estoti, like it's it's definitely one we're going to keep an eye on. And as soon as this either any of their game scales, we'll definitely do a review of exactly that game because you know a, it's big news that a publisher of this caliber and size is just. Uh, I mean, game studios, developer, uh, studio developer is going like yeah. going without a publisher. Yeah, yeah. that would definitely. Yeah. And fingers but, crossed for it, guys. But yeah. this, it, it's going to happen, like yeah, I could say, like. Yeah, it's like the, the smaller, like hyper casual studios, kind of realize like they can they earn decent money on on the publishing deals, I guess, and they they kind of realize like oh well, we can build those games, right? So we know how to build games. So why don't we do it on our own? Because because that that that's like what's happening here. Because hybrid yeah. casual games now need much more product know how and exactly. the leverage is shifting. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly because they yeah, the. I mean, I would, I would not say genre expertise, but yeah, the product know-how. You know, you need to know how to build the games properly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. So all according to the plan. Yeah. And good luck, guys, and yeah. yeah, we'll definitely keep it on our radio. If you need help, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, uh, thank you very much for listening. Uh, please join our Slack, uh, as you could hear. It's pretty interesting, and uh, the knowledge is there. Um, all the time please also uh, keep subscribing uh, our subscriber count uh, really increases day by day which is amazing thank you very much for the support and uh, see you next time bye cheers ciao